Something strange is happening in the Pacific. That's the headline for this article published this month in New Scientist. Pedro Dinezio of the University of Colorado Boulder called it the most important unanswered question in climate science. And it's this. For years, climate models have predicted that ocean waters will warm. And mostly that has been absolutely correct. Except here, a patch of the Pacific Ocean where it has been cooling for the last 30 years. One patch of ocean defying the predictions. So, OK, that's an anomaly with such a complex system that we're trying to model. You shouldn't be totally surprised that there will be anomalies, I suppose. So what makes that the most important unanswered question? Well, the fact that we don't know for sure why the cooling is happening means that we don't know what will happen next. It could continue the way that it is, or alternatively, it could suddenly flip over into warming. And which of those happens is going to affect the globe? The future of what has been labelled as the cold tongue could determine whether the southwestern United States gets stuck in an extended mega drought. For instance, it could influence how much Australia gets hit by the conditions that make it more susceptible to wildfires. The monsoon season in India could be pushed to be less or to be more intense. And the likelihood of famine in the Horn of Africa depends on it. So unsurprisingly, climate scientists are trying to solve this puzzle. Right now, there are competing theories and a degree of confusion. The Pacific Ocean is, of course, a pretty big deal when it comes to climate. It is the largest and deepest body of water on the planet, covering more surface area than all the land masses put together. And it already messes with the world's climate on a very regular basis. Every few years, it flips from a La Nina state with cooler water temperatures in its equatorial region to El Nino, which it did recently, which brings water warmers. It's not the only cyclical change. There's another one that spreads over decades. So when scientists first observed the so-called cold tongue back in the 1990s, they assumed it was another element of the Pacific's variation and complexity, and just rather assumed it wouldn't stick around for long. But it did. Generally, variations and oddities get predicted pretty well by the climate models, whatever some in the comments below would have you believe. For example, the so-called cold blob in the North Atlantic linked to a weakening of the ocean current that brings heat up from the tropics, along with other changes in ocean circulation and the cool sea surface creating more low-level clouds. But when you get one that runs counter to all expectations, it's an indicator that there's a factor at play that you haven't yet appreciated, which is why you don't know exactly then how it will behave. And it could make a huge difference. Warming waters in the Western Pacific, at the same time as cooling waters in the East, leads to more low-lying clouds over the East, which means that more sunlight gets reflected rather than absorbed, which reduces the expected level of global warming. And not by a little, actually by quite a lot. The cold tongue could reduce the amount of global warming by as much as 30% compared to current predictions. To give that context, Scientific American says it's the difference between adding an additional 1.3 degrees C by the end of the century or 1.9 degrees C. And you might feel that, therefore, that will be a good thing, less global warming. But as with all of these things, the devil is in the detail. And what happens globally and how it feels locally are two different things. The cold tongue might reduce the global temperatures, but it would keep the base state of the climate more like La Nina, which would increase the incidence of droughts in the Horn of Africa and the southwest of America. 
Indeed, that's likely why we've seen recent drought conditions in a lot of California in recent years, contrary to climate model predictions which suggest that there should be more rain and snow in winter, not less. If, however, the cold tongue eventually flips and falls in line with those climate projections because whatever's calling it exhausts itself or is overwhelmed by the effects of warming, then in that case you're looking at more droughts for Australia and Indonesia, more likelihood of failed monsoons in India. Obviously it would be useful to know which range of scenarios we should be preparing for. Adaptation's a thing, but you know, we need to know what we're adapting to. So what are some of the theories being put forward to explain the mystery? One possible driver is the melting of Antarctica glaciers. Climate models reportedly don't always include meltwater from the Antarctic in their parameters. At least one study from last year suggested that the models do start to show cooling in the tropical Pacific if that is corrected in the models. That version would tend to the proposition that near future warming projections would be overestimated, but with the various local consequences that we've already noted. Another theory is that ozone depletion and climate change are strengthening winds in the region, leading to more cold air being pushed from Antarctica to the surface waters of the Southern Ocean and changing the upwelling of colder waters from the deep ocean. Again, this phenomenon isn't well replicated in the climate models, which may or may not be important, depending on whether the phenomena responsible persists or eventually falls into line as global warming continues. A number of researchers hold that if you just keep pumping vast quantities of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, as we are, then ultimately, sometime in the next 20 to 100 years, it will certainly flip back. Obviously, such a flip could see something of a surge in warming if it happens. So again, we really need to know the mechanisms before that, if at all possible. We've probably already seen how much of a difference short-term changes can make to the warmth of the planet. The major increase in ocean temperatures in the Northern Hemisphere, the graph of which I referred to as recently as last week, is now thought to have come about because of new regulations massively cutting the amount of sulphur particulates allowed to be emitted by shipping. The change brought into effect in 2020 has significantly reduced the amount of cloud cover over that body of water particularly, and therefore a lot more sunlight is getting through to heat up the water. We debate quite a lot about whether humanity should use geoengineering to reduce the warming of the planet. It's a highly controversial proposition, unsurprisingly. Well, it turns out we were geoengineering already. We just kind of didn't realise it. And the problem with geoengineering is that once you've started, then you get hit pretty hard if at some point you decide to stop and so it seems we might have been. In the case of the Pacific Cold Tongue, it's a large enough phenomenon that if it were to switch in a rapid manner, it would be pretty chaotic to the human populations whose adaptation to prevailing conditions would be completely wrong-footed, which would involve massive and urgent infrastructure changes to try to cope. It's a reminder, if we needed one, that the details on how this stuff plays out matter a lot, at least to the various populations of people who will find themselves at the sharp end. If you found this video useful or interesting, please consider becoming a patron supporter of this channel. These videos would not be possible without the support of patrons, and my thanks go, as always, to the existing and past Patreon supporters who have made it possible to date. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please share with anyone else you think would also enjoy it. Word of mouth is really important to us. And if you've not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? As the saying goes, that subscribe button won't smash itself. <laughs>